Welcome back to My Sister's TBR, the podcast where you join us in our bookish adventures. I'm Stacy, And I'm Rebecca. We're your book-loving sisters, always on the hunt for the next captivating story. In today's episode, we're brewing up some literary magic as we share our October reads and take a deep dive into The Coven by Harper L. Woods. Get ready for a spellbinding adventure as we unveil our thoughts on this month's reads from romance to fantasy. And stick around to discover why The Coven has us under its spell. So snuggle up and let's get started. (laughs) So we're a little bit late uploading this episode and recording it, but (laughs) it's fine. (laughs) It's okay. We just, things just got a little crazy at the end of the month, but (laughs) we're good. We're We're ready. (laughs) I'm happy to be back. Um, I had a pretty good month of reading. I had, I totaled seven books in October. And that's all oh, like that's actual definitely... reading. <laughs> oh, like no audio books. No. So I'm impressed. Wow. Good job. And especially yeah. wasn't it September month? You only had like two books. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so you're back. You're back. <laughs> I don't know because we're four days into November and I'm still only on the one book. So but we won't talk about that Um, book right now. Nope. (laughs) Nope. That's for the next episode. Yeah, you definitely had a way better month than I did. I'm still stuck in the two book, two book months. (laughs) You're working a lot. So that's, it's understandable. Uh, But I'm like, I'm trying. You have to make sure that your books that you're reading are just like really good. So you know that you've got two good books. Yeah, exactly. And like, there have been a lot of weeks in the months lately, um, or honestly, ever since I've been up here, (laughs) um, that I get in like, reading ruts after I finish a book. And then I'm in like, two weeks until I can actually get right back into that, like, you know, when you're looking forward to actually picking up the book and like getting into it. Um, Yeah. And I was afraid that that was going to happen this time. But honestly, as soon as I finished my last read, I dove right into, like, the next book. Okay. So this month I think is going to be good. Or next next month I think is going to be good. Maybe it depends, too, on, um, like, how invested you were in the book. Because I find that if I am, like, that... Yeah, like, I get really bad book hangover if I'm, like, super into the book and then it ends and I'm like, where does my life go from here? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so maybe it's that funny. has something to do with it. I don't know. It's funny because uh, Ilsa just messaged me the other day saying that she just finished her very last Colleen Hoover book and she was like, I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a feat, though. Yep. All right, Stacy. start us off with your October reads. So I was trying to uh, carry out a kind of like a spooky October vibe for this month, like the books that Mm -hmm. I was, the books that I was choosing. And I think I, I think I succeeded. (laughs) Uh, I started out the month strong with Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks. This is a contemporary romance. It was 330 pages and I rated it four stars. Um, Very, very close to five. I loved this book. So it's about Calum and Lark. They're as opposite as you could possibly be. If they were colors, Calum would be gray and Lark would be like the brightest yellow. He's a mortician. She's an animator. He's shy. She's outgoing. Uh, Calum was raised by his grandfather who run the funeral parlor uh, prepping Caleb to take over instead of Cal's father, who skipped out, yeah, like skipped out on them. Hmm. Uh, when Cal's grandfather passes, there is a stipulation in the will that puts a little hitch in the plan that Cal must marry before his 35th birthday or oh ownership will go back to his deadbeat dad. So, for obvious reasons, this sucks. <laughs> yep. I. <laughs> uh, Right? Like, he's desperately trying to find a wife, but he's not exactly, like, the outgoing type. Uh, He doesn't Mm -hmm. enjoy the whole dating scene. He's really reserved, I find. Mm -hmm. 
And Lark is an animator. She's an American. Uh, she moves to Ireland for work. Uh, and totally unknown to her, she moves in next door to Calum's um, funeral home. Oh, dear. So here she, like, she is just so full of life. And, <laughs> you know, like, you living next door the to the complete here. opposite. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I think, like, at the start of it, she thinks that she's next door to, like, a bed and breakfast. Like, the name of it was so, you know, like, it, it didn't sound like it was a funeral parlor. So, like, yeah, anyways. um, She was obviously really weirded out about living next to a funeral parlor. Uh, but she very soon befriends Calum. Uh, mm-hmm. And it kind of gets messy from there. So, like, she's dealing with her own baggage, um, and she tries to help Calum search for a wife before the final nine months are up. Uh, but they're growing closer and more comfortable with each other. So this is where it starts getting messy. Mm. Yeah. But it was, like, such a fun and unique romance. I haven't read a book like it before. Uh, honestly, I picked it up because of the cover. It's one of those super cute, like, animated, yeah. uh, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure everybody has seen this book by now. It's It's been pretty popular. And, like, the funeral home setting, it just gave me October vibes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, but it didn't, I don't know, it didn't really give me that vibes as I was reading it. Um, I just, it was unexpected. Not in a bad mm-hmm. way. Okay. It's just, it didn't give me October vibes. <laughs> But I genuinely, <laughs> genuinely loved the novel and the characters. Uh, it did have really heavy themes, but the book still felt lighthearted. And, like, some parts were just so comical um, that, like, it just made me feel giddy. <laughs> and there's not many books that books. do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I mean, there's just something so incredibly appealing when the main male character speaks to the female main character in another language, like in his own language, Mm. and she doesn't know what he's saying. It's just this, right? Like, there's (laughs) something so sweet about that. He was such a heartbreaker. But, like, if Christina Lauren's uh, book, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, and Ashley Poston's The Dead Romantics had a love child, this would be it. Okay. And those those two <laughs> books are fabulous. <laughs> so So this was right up your alley right from the oh, right from the beginning. Right from the start. Yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. I knew I was gonna love this. And I mean, I think Avi Fairbanks is an incredible author. She was so easy to read and she just I don't know, there was just so many little things in this book that it just felt so right and so good. Mm. I think she did an awesome job. And I'm pretty sure this is her debut novel. Yeah, I so, heard that too. Yeah. High what a hopes. Good start. High, yeah. So this was a friends to lovers, like rom com vibes and um a slow burn. It wasn't very fast. Mm. It was a nice slow pace. Okay. That's still yeah. nice every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So that was my first book and it started <laughs> out like I said, the month was strong. Damn. Oh. I did start reading that actually. Um, I didn't finish it. I only, I was only a couple of chapters in, but I can see why you loved it so much. Yeah. It was really good. Immediately after finishing this book, <laughs> I started reading Butcher and Blackbird by Bree, Brian, Breen Weaver. I don't know how to pronounce her name. So I keep, I literally keep seeing, I keep seeing that around. Like, on Goodreads, on my suggested yeah. reads. Like, it's, I see it everywhere. Yeah. It's, oh, it was so fun. <laughs> okay. But I'll, okay. It's 362 pages. It's a dark contemporary romance. I rated it five stars. Oh, my gosh. Like, full five stars. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's Friends of Lovers, Reverse Grumpy Sunshine. And only one bed trope. Oh. <laughs> oh. My heart. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Rowan and Sloan are serial killers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I like yeah. to start. <laughs> uh-huh. After a chance encounter, 
Sparks flying, the rival murderers create an annual game which they hunt down the most dangerous monsters in a game of who can kill them first. Each year, they grow closer and closer as their friendship develops into something else. The ghosts left in their wake are only a few steps behind, ready to claim more than just their newfound love. Can Rowan and Sloan dig themselves out of a game of graves, or have they finally met their match? I cannot say enough good things about this book. It was an experience, and the very first page was enough to hook me. It was so vivid. I Did I read you the first page of this book? I'm pretty sure you read the first. Yeah, I think so. I know you did that with okay. something you were reading last month. So that or It, it was this probably month. this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was because it gave me um, Verity vibes. Yeah. Like that first, you know, the it really hooks you. Yep. Yeah. This did that same sort of sort of thing. Um, it was really disturbing, but I could not stop reading it. Hey, what like better there were some read obviously, it. yeah, like there were some obvious um, graphic scenes, we'll say. Hmm. Uh, definitely take the trigger warning seriously. But like me, the character development for both of the, the main characters were just phenomenal. Hmm. Uh, like, I loved how Roland was always rooting for Sloan. He was like super golden retriever energy, uh. which was really adorable. And that's saying a lot for me yeah. to say that I liked <laughs> that because normally the golden retriever vibe just, uh, yeah, like, yeah. no, just, just go away with that. But this, oh, I I'm absolutely surprised. loved it. But wow. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just, it, the book had me on my toes the whole time. Like, like so nervous for them because I mean, these games are, are dangerous. They're going after other more dangerous people than themselves and making a game out of it. So you're kind of mm-hmm. like, like afraid that they're going to like slip like, up and yeah. And yeah. they get caught or, you know, <laughs> but uh, I loved it. It was just. Again, it was another book that had really heavy themes, but was written very lightheartedly. Okay. Okay. So it I was like comical. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember your last five star read. Um, I can find out. I'm trying to not give them out like all over the place. Like yeah. I know we've talked about that before, but how we're both kind of trying to conserve <laughs> yeah. our five stars. Yeah. But Sometimes it's really hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> some of some of them actually do deserve it. Yeah. Uh, a Court of Wings and Ruin, but I don't think we can even oh. count. Of course, the Akatar that's book, like so something that's not Akatar. <laughs> um, the Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. That okay. was my last. And that was July thirtieth. Wow. So. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I'm being a stingy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be. Uh-huh. Uh, the next book that I read was Nevermore Bookstore by Kerrigan Byrne and Cynthia St. Aubin. Uh, this was a contemporary romance. There's a theme, I think. I think all my books have been contemporary romance <laughs> this month. Uh, so it's 363 pages. Yeah. Um, I rated this one a three star. Cool. I I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. It was it was decent. Um, this is small town romance. Uh, another slow burn. Uh, so Caddy runs a bookstore, which was previously owned by her late aunt. And every Thursday, she stays late waiting for a mysterious customer to call with an order of books. Uh, she knows nothing of this man other than his name. Uh, in a general address where the books are delivered. Uh, These phone calls last hours and quickly become the highlight of her week. She falls for the man with a jagged velvet voice and often wonders what sort of alchemy might it inspire if they met in person. Uh, Fox wants nothing more than the brilliant, beautiful bookstore owner, but he knows it can never happen. He stays in his mountain hideaway high above sleepy little Townsend Harbor. His hermit's existence protects him and others from the pain of his past. 
Uh, one of their weekly calls is interrupted by a break-in. Fox is powerless to protect Caddy from his hideaway. He soon finds himself much closer to Caddy by helping her out around the bookstore and keeping an eye on her in person. Caddy is none the wiser that this new helper is a mysterious man she speaks to every Thursday from her bookstore. Um, for some reason, as I was reading this book, the, um, the town always made me think of St. John's. Oh, interesting. Like everything that they were describing, just, it just seemed like it was a, like, somewhere downtown St. John's. Okay, I like that, actually. It makes it really easy to, like, visualize and, like, put yourself there in their shoes. (laughs) Uh, I did, I liked, I enjoyed this book. There were a lot of cringy moments. Like, Caddy is really colorful. She's funny, um, a little out there, and, like, so optimistic, it hurts. (laughs) Um, But she's a a lot to take in, I think. I bet. Like, she's just one of those personalities. Yeah, and, like, some of the things that she says were a little, like... Like, weird, I don't know, cringy, I guess is the best way to put it. Well, I mean, especially when, like, I'm not saying that you're not optimistic, but, like... I'm a pessimist. When when you're on the opposite side. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not a, like, peppy, upbeat, sort of colorful person. I'm not. (laughs) So so it was really hard to uh, connect with this character, Mm -hmm. and maybe that's why I did the whole three-star could be yeah yep. but the cover was really misleading i don't I know really like the cover it looked really nice oh yeah i'm i'm all like i really enjoyed it i thought it looked great but for some reason i was thinking this was going to be a paranormal romance oh i don't know why hmm. but like and i'm not the only person that thought that a lot of people going into this book thought it was a paranormal romance what the heck so i don't know i don't know there's, there must be something, maybe because it's called Nevermore Bookstore just gives like, I don't know. Yeah. I, can, I don't I know. But, that. yep. Um, but it was a fun, really quick read. Both main characters have severe conditions like PTSD, chronic pain. Uh, so there's like a lot of uh, talk of how it physically and mentally weighs on the characters. Mm. Uh, so the inclusion of that in the story uh, gave it like that authentic feel. It just yeah. felt like it was real characters. Uh, and you don't really get many um, books that the characters outright talk about, uh, whether it's disabilities or uh, like even so much as just like anxiety and depression. Like mm, you right. get the vibes from characters a lot of the times, but there's not many characters that straight out say, like, yeah, I have anxiety, I have depression, I have mm. chronic pain, I have, you know. Yeah. So it was really neat seeing that being such a prominent part of the book. Yeah, very realistic. So, yeah. Yeah, this book won't be everyone's cup of tea, but it was definitely a nice change of pace for me. So that was three out of the six that I read. So if you wanted to tell us the book that you read this month, <laughs> other than the featured read. <laughs> My one spare book. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I've talked about this before, how I, uh, have put a pause on reading Colleen Hoover's books because I'm just not ready to be done her books yet or her (laughs) collection. Um, I finally jumped back in and honestly, I'm so glad that I did because I truly missed reading her so badly. (laughs) I forgot how easy she is, like... Just her, like, her writing. Oh, my God. Like, I flew through this book. (laughs) Okay. So, I read Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I've been waiting a very long time to read this. I've heard so (laughs) many good things. Yeah. I started it ages ago, but then I put it on pause. How come? Um, I'm not sure. It's not that I wasn't enjoying it. Um, I think it was just something else came up at the time, and I just didn't get around to going back to it well you you should (laughs) it was actually really good um so it's 339 pages the genre i guess genre would be romance maybe this kind of dark too dark yeah like twisty romance um Yeah. yeah it just says 
romance here, but it was definitely more of like a a little bit darker, um, mm-hmm. dark romantic thriller. Since oh, this is interesting. Okay, so under like the write up, it says the instant number one New York Times and USA Today bestseller, a story about a woman caught in a dangerous web of obsessive love trying to find a way out before it's too late. This new updated edition is a burn burner uh, and Colleen Hoover's darkest romantic thriller since Verity. Mm. Yeah. So Sloane will go through hell and back for those she loves. And she does so every single day. Caught up with the alluring Asa Jackson, a notorious drug trafficker, Sloane has finally found a lifeline to cling to, even if it means compromising her morals. She was in dire straits trying to pay for her brother's care until she met Asa. But as Sloane became emotionally and economically reliant on him, he in turn develop a disturbing obsession with her, one that becomes increasingly dangerous every day. When undercover DEA agent Carter enters the picture, Sloane's surprised to feel an immediate attraction between them, despite knowing that if Asa finds out, he will kill him. And Asa has always been a step ahead of everyone in his life, including Sloan. No one has ever gotten in his way. No one except Carter. Together, Sloan and Carter must find a way out before it's too late. Oh. Mm. So, this was like, I mean, she does list out triggers, like trigger warnings at the beginning of the book. And honestly, like, yeah. Like, I even low-key found it a little bit triggering and like we've talked about this before like we don't really have any triggers (laughs) no none (laughs) like zero it was very intense it was between like the the three point of views so i i've really enjoyed that like seeing uh sloan's point of view carter's point of view and ass's point of view Mm -hmm. so that was really cool um yeah but like asa is just a huge walking red flag oh my god it i read that and i was like yeah i'm just i hate men right now <laughs> <laughs> he he was absolutely horrible um oh. he even faked having like schizophrenia so that like some of the things that he was doing he would get away with oh my goodness it was wild okay absolutely wild like it literally i had like I want to say 100 pages left and it got to this point and it was like everything was happy like they were you know it like the chaos died down and I was like okay we're happy here there's still 100 <laughs> pages left what's gonna happen in between here? oh that's that's so um common in Colleen Hoover's books though like yes there's a point in just about every book where everything feels like it's calm <laughs> like this is where the novel should end yep. and then you look and there's still so much left and you're just like okay here it comes. <laughs> You're uh, did you it. know how she how she wrote this book? I think um, we might have touched on it before. I think so. I didn't actually know about this before. Like, I wish that I was, like, around during this time. But I uh-huh. she talks about it a lot in, like, the acknowledgments in okay. Too Late. How, like, she – this was, like, a project yeah. on this, like, group page. Yeah, like, that's so cool. Yeah, it was Wattpad. That's so sick. Yeah, she was releasing it, like, sort of slowly and for free. So, like, anybody with a Wattpad account could just go read it. And, yeah, like, it was just sort of a, a project for, like, in between books. I hate that I wasn't a reader until, like, <laughs> like well, I don't even remember, 2021 or 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this was, like, 2016, I think. Wow. Ish, when she wrote this on Damn. Wattpad. Damn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wish I was there for that. That is so cool. Yeah, so I I rated it like a I rated it a four. I mean, obviously, because like it's Colleen Hoover. I just <laughs> I love her writing. You style. can't take I, yeah. You <laughs> can't make yourself do it any less than that. Anyways, <laughs> no. I think I did one of her books, maybe a little bit lower than that. But like, no, I this was written very very well, and I liked how she like acknowledged schizophrenia and like Mm -hmm. mental illness and stuff like that and like it still had the very much similar vibes to like her other books yeah um 
But. I'm curious to know, now that it's published, what she's changed in it. Like, how oh. it compares to the original Wattpad version. I wonder. Right? I'm because sh- I'm sure this is after going through editors and, you know, the the whole system of publishing. I wonder what may have been changed, if anything. Oh, there was definitely some changes, I'd say. Yeah. I, uh... We might need to look into that more. What the heck? I'm looking... Yeah, Get definitely. our hands on to, like, the original. Oh, really. I would love that. That would be so cool. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking at, I just came across a review for Too Late, and somebody said, sounds super silly, almost as if AI generated it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody screams AI generated stuff now. God. Um, but, yeah, it was really good. Uh, very, very, very easy to read. Had similar, like, intense vibes as Verity. like. Mm -hmm. With regards to, like, oh, my God, like, are they going to get caught? Like, just sitting on the edge of your seat? Like, oh, like, what's going to happen next? Oh, I love that. Yeah, but Asa was good God. I absolutely hate that man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Good to know. He was, yeah, I can't, like, I don't want to say too many things to, like, Mm -hmm. spoil it, but he was the type to want his cake and to be able to eat it, too, and nobody else was allowed to eat his cake or look at it or look at it he <laughs> was so obnoxious so oh possessive and not in the way that we like it exactly oh, okay. exactly like he yeah oh yeah so possessive absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was just sat there reading and i was like okay i hate you i hate you i hate you uh, <laughs> but it was still good <laughs> I'm wondering if that may be why I decided to pause it. Maybe I just wasn't, I don't know. Honestly, I can see that because, yeah. You like, know how I get sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If I can... something rubs me the wrong way in a book, I'm just like, oh. Mm, nope. <laughs> You're going on the pause shelf for a little while. Time out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can see that, honestly. If that, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I'm, I'll give it another try. You should. You should. It was. It was. Do you have it physical? Yep. Bring it home with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta add it to my collection. But yeah, I pre-ordered two books and I also ordered Fourth Wing and Too Late and they came right. like last week and I, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, jumped right into it. That was awesome. So what was your next read? Uh, I read a short story, a novella, oh. uh, The Scepter by Jay Bree. She's the one that uh, wrote um, The Bonds that... Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. Probably Savage Bonds, those those books. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed the ones that I've read of that. I haven't finished that series, obviously, but um, I thought, you know, this is only an 87-page novella, you know, the get another idea of what her other series was like. Uh, so this one was the prequel for uh, Crown of Oaths Oaths and Curses. Uh, so this one like really set the scene for that series. Mm. It follows Rook and her brother Pemba, who are witches of the Ravenward Coven. Uh, the forest protection abandons their coven, and only Rook and Pemba escape the massacre. Uh, they are the last two Ravensward witches in the Southern Lands. So it's a race of survival. They must leave before their survival reaches the attackers. But first they have to make the journey up Augur Mountain to meet with the seer to discover Rook's fate. Since it was like a short novella, it was really difficult to really get to know the characters. Uh, mm. So I can't really say much on what the characters are like, but... Uh, I guess the way it ends, the rest of the series must be about those two, or at least follow Rook, um, the the girl. Mm-hmm. But I I just I thought it was so cute. Like Pemba's eagerness to like help and support his sister was like unmatched. Like I could not get over that sibling bond that they had. Oh, that's nice. So I am excited to read the rest of the series, or at least start the first book and see how it plays out because. Like, I'm getting some real uh, enemies to lovers vibes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's listed as a faded mates trope. Enemies to lovers, possibly. Oh. So. Oh, I love it. 
And I do like her writing. It was it was very easy to read. So I think it's going to be another like good entry level fantasy. I think mm, nice. Maybe I'll have to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only eighty seven pages, so you know I might have to read that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because throughout the book, um, she also has this uh, uh, like voice in her head, which is somebody like speaking to her through. Oh. Her mind. Yeah, so that plays into it as well. Uh, but yeah, I rated it four stars. Like, it was a solid good start to a to a fantasy series. Okay, damn. hmm Oh, and my next one. <laughs> I could not r- not rate this one a full five stars. Like, this oh. was a fantastic novel i read it i almost read it in one one sitting oh my god yeah the dead romantics by ashley poston so over the summer i bought two of her books the dead romantics and the seven year slip oh yes and we talked about the seven year slip when it was uh releasing yep super interested in it like that whole time slip romance just yes. it really intrigued oh, us yeah so i was i figured oh i'll just get through the dead romantic so i can now is is not connected but oh, okay i have heard that she does sort of give like little easter eggs to other books in it but that still wasn't why like i just figured if i was reading the seven year slip i should start with you know one of her other books first and the yep. dead romantics was was what i picked uh-huh. this is a paranormal romance um, I went into it blind, but I'm so, so happy I did. <sighs> After saying that, like, I don't want to read the description. But... I know. Like, literally, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm going to plug my ears. You can go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll address the readers. You you just mute me for a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do, do you not really want to hear anything about it? Are you it's actually like, going to read it? I am actually going to read it, but it's fine. Just... You can is there's no spoilers like <laughs> whatever I say is gonna be whatever is on like the Goodreads page or I you know. know whatever you use for description. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <sighs> so it's a small town romance. Mm. It was enemies or lovers, mm. and there was absolutely zero spice. Oh, and there was still and still five stars. still five stars. Oh. <laughs> so that gives you a good good amount of insight into how well this book was written. Yes. Uh, oh, I was just, I was in love right from the very first page. So it's uh, about Florence Day. She's a ghost writer for a prolific romance author. However, after a terrible breakout, breakout. <laughs> after a terrible breakup, she no longer believes in love. When her new editor, a too handsome mountain of a man, won't give her an extension on the book deadline, she prepares to kiss her career goodbye. But then she gets a phone call she never wanted to receive, and she must return home for the first time in a decade to help her family bury her father. Back in the hometown that ran her out a decade ago, she is faced with a ghost standing at the funeral parlor's front door, just as broad and infuriatingly handsome as ever, and just as confused about why he's there as she is. Romance is certainly dead. But so is her new editor, and his unfinished business will have her second-guessing everything she's ever known about love stories. <sighs> that gave me goosebumps. Okay. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> like, I, I'm i still haunted by this book, and I have I read it, like, a month ago at this point. <laughs> yeah, maybe not quite a month, but either way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was beautiful. It was captivating, eye-opening, and just absolutely heart-wrenching i laughed and i cried and i laugh cried (laughs) it was (laughs) it was so easy to just put myself in florence's shoes and feel what she was feeling i love that yeah the storytelling was gripping and the light humor throughout made the heavy topics like easier to read Mm. Uh, like i honestly closed this book and i just i almost opened it again to start from the beginning (laughs) (laughs) i I just loved absolutely everything about this novel. I don't even care that it was predictable. I was just so entranced by it. Oh my god. And I would easily, easily give it six stars if I could. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Sign me up. Dang okay. 
<laughs> you, I've got it here, physical. So okay. <laughs> next month you can you can read it. Uh, but oh, it was just it was obviously really really difficult reading about like her father dying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I just I found that really hard to read, and then like everything um, with her family afterwards, like the the whole span of like you know his funeral and his like his last wishes and stuff like that mm. was just oh it's like a gut punch yeah but i know i don't even like thinking about like our parents getting old no <laughs> like no. that <laughs> yep mm, i know but <laughs> but anyways super super good book highly highly recommend to anybody mm. oh. okay uh, uh <laughs> And my my last book, I don't. Uh, I'll just I'll just read it. Out. It was only seventy one pages. Mm-hmm. Considered a paranormal romance or neurotica. Oh. Uh, I don't know what tropes would describe this. Oh, so God. I'm not even going to try. Uh, so it's unhinged by Vera Valentine. I have been seeing this book everywhere. I haven't seen so, this yet. Oh, it was, it's all over my TikTok, all over the book groups I'm in on Facebook. It's just, this has been talked about a lot. Uh, I'll read out the description. Okay. Uh, I apologize for butchering names. So I'll just start with that. Someone's <laughs> been watching Tana closely, but he's a lot closer than she realizes. From intimate moments to lazy afternoons on the beach. On the beach. What is wrong with my eyes? <laughs> <sighs> from intimate moments to lazy afternoons on the couch he's secretly seen it all and fallen for her along the way the problem is that someone else is watching too and his obsession with tana is a lot more dangerous when a man claiming to be her front door enters her dreams to warn her about an imminent threat to her life tana initially chalks it up to her weird late night snacks like you would <laughs> <laughs> but she rethinks things when her earnest visitor insists he's also ready to protect her in exchange for one hell of a favor. When Tana trades her best line of defense for an unlikely supernatural ally, the threat lurking beyond her apartment hallway starts getting desperate as the law closes in. Can her, her inhuman companion save her from the worst of humanity or is it too late for both of them? Hmm. I honestly don't know what to say about this because I think I actually liked the story. <laughs> like, I mean, it was wild. It was a ride, like, right from the start. Totally bonkers. <laughs> but it's one of those books that, like, you just you just have to read it. Yeah. I mean, it was only a short story. So I feel like that bad. description is so vague, though, too. <laughs> <I did. laughs> uh, it's it's more th- like it's obviously right from the the very f- front cover. It's listed as an erotic door romance, which right off the bat should, you know, the warning bells should be. <laughs> what does that even mean? An erotic door romance? I don't understand. Uh you have to read it. I I can't spoil it. What the hell? Yeah, I know. Uh yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyways, like, Vera Valentine, like, she, I don't know how she made it work, but she did. So, I'll give her that. Okay. Because I think I actually rated, no, I don't have it rated. And I, I'm I'm not going to give my rating. <laughs> this is staying unrated. <laughs> because there's people we know that listen to this. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> that is the last one I'm going to talk about right yeah. now. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to forget that this book ever graced our, <laughs> our podcast. Oh, Ugh. dear. But yeah, it was definitely like a paranormal, like, in, in a way, like, Greek gods are brought into it as well. Okay, so interesting. That, that give you a little more insight into it. But I mean, it's only 71 pages. So literally, like, <sighs> two hours. I think I had it done. Wow. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really quick. So if you're looking for a good uh, (laughs) 
palate cleanser, I guess. <laughs> that it would be, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and then I think the last is just the featured read. If you wanted to uh, inform us on what our featured read of October <laughs> was. Sure. <laughs> okay, so The Coven by Harper L. Woods was our featured read for this month. For October. Um, this is the number one in the Coven of Bones series. And honestly, <laughs> I loved this. <laughs> oh my god, me too. It was so good. Uh, so it's fantasy, romance, paranormal, um, witches, vampires, magic. Like, oh, amazing. Uh, it's 298 pages and... The plot is revenge, raised to be my father's weapon against the coven that took away his sister and his birthright. I would do anything to protect my younger brother from suffering the same fate. My duty forces me to the secret town of Crystal Hollow and the prestigious Hollows Grove University, where the best and brightest of my kind learn to practice their magic free from human judgment. There are no whispered words words here no condemnation for the blood that flows through my veins the only animosity i face comes from the beautiful and infuriating headmaster alaric grayson thorn a man oh, who despises <laughs> a man who despises me just as much as i loathe him and everything he stands for but that doesn't mean secrets don't threaten to tear the school in two no one talks about the bloody massacre that forced it to close decades prior, only the opportunity it can afford to those fortunate enough to attend. Because for the first time in 50 years, the coven will open its wards to the 13, 13 promising students destined to change the world if the ghosts of Hollow's Grove's victims don't kill them first. <laughs> uh, so... Um, I rated this a four. I rated it a four and a half. I was really close to five starring this one. Okay, I can hold on. I gotta log in. I gotta see if I did actually rate it four. I think I did. You did. Everybody on my friends list that <laughs> read it rated it four stars. Interesting. Yeah. Honestly, like, okay, without going into too much detail right now, um, the ending. Oh absolutely is the f almost the full reason for me giving it a four star rating i did not expect that ending whatsoever <laughs> no no oh my god and like that doesn't happen very often especially with romances like you can tell where things are going yeah and especially i find paranormal romance i yeah. always seem to find paranormal romance are like super predictable yep because, I mean, there's only so many things that can be that sort of exactly. thing. You know, that, that mentality. Yep. But this was, whew. I, Like, I thought that this was, like, a classic enemies to lovers. Mm-hmm. That it oh, is it's... not. Yep. Oh, my God. It was, like, ugh, it's like oh, I can't even say any of it because it's too I much know. spoilers. I know. But should, should I we just, just like... Okay, we're we're just gonna end this now, and we're just gonna skip to the <laughs> to the spoilers. <laughs> All right, everybody, get out now if you <laughs> haven't read this book. Yeah, we don't want to ruin it for you. <laughs> uh, are we actually ending it here? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so don't forget to check out our Instagram uh, at <laughs> my sister's TBR. Uh, we post a whole lot of stuff on there uh, better featured reads and. Uh, you know, when we do oh. giveaways <laughs> and other books that all we're that fun reading. Stuff. All oh, the books yeah. that we're reading. And we like getting, you know, comments from you guys about, you know, what you're looking forward to or what your thoughts are on the books that we're reading. So interact with us. Keep doing it. And <laughs> don't forget to subscribe so you can never miss an yeah. episode. Yeah. Subscribing <laughs> and rating our podcast. That are those are great ways to make sure that we're getting out there and more people can hear us be idiots. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's it for this one. Other okay. than those of you who want to hear our real true thoughts on the coven, Ooh. you can stick around after our little outro music. 
All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Toodles. Okay. Okay. So, welcome back. <laughs> Hello, friends. <laughs> um, can we just can we just take a second to really truly appreciate how many boxes that this novel checks off? Like not not, not just the fact that it's paranormal romance. Like that's obviously a great box to check off. But yeah. it being enemies or lovers. Forbidden oh. romance, yeah. literally a villain main male character, <laughs> an age literally. gap, touch her and die, witchy badass female main character, and the banter. Like, that's just what, what comes to mind. That's a complete <laughs> still... package right there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this book, literally, I feel like it was written for me and, you know, tied with a little ribbon on top and yeah. just <laughs> handed to me and said, here, Stacy, this is now going to be your favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> made just for you <laughs> yep because it was there was so much that i just absolutely adored in this book and it I mean i know i said it back when you were listing out the uh the description but um alaric grayson thorn what a name <laughs> it literally I think, I think that's the perfect name for him oh it is yep yep like it literally could not have gotten any better the whole, like, novel, I was just constantly guessing, like, what is going on? He was, like, so mysterious and, like, not at the same time. Like, I don't know. I, I felt like I kept almost knowing where this was going to go, especially, yeah. like, like we've said before, like, classic enemies to lovers. Like, yeah, obviously, they're going to end up in the end. Like, things are going to be super happy and, mm-hmm. you know. Wow. But, man, did it take twists. Holy crap. <laughs> like, I was expecting the whole villainous thing, right? Like, me, yeah. it, it warns you of that. But I wasn't expecting it to be, like, I thought that once he finally started to, like, soften towards her, like, that was it. Then they were, yeah. you know, they were good. This was it. And then it just totally flipped again. And all of a sudden he was a villain again. I even fell for that act. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, my God, like, they're going to be so happy. Like, yeah. okay, okay. First off, with regards to the age gap, okay, so the first, I, oh. there was a little bit that gave me a bit of an ick, though. Okay. Um, Her first night there, and he went into her room and, like, undressed her. Oh, yeah. So, normally, like... Yeah. I'm okay with things like that, but I don't know what it, I don't know. I got the ick then a little bit. Like, that was the only part yeah. that gave me the ick, but I just kind of didn't really like that. I was like, um, I don't know. It just felt very weird to me. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it seemed, uh, like almost out of character for them. Yeah. And I remember like read as I was reading, I was thinking like, like, like Willow, she must know, you know? And like, even after that, like, it seemed like she didn't then at that point, but I think at one point she did mention it to him about being in her room because she could smell him, I think she said. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Like, I think that's what kind of smoothed it over a bit for me because I realized that she was aware that it happened. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Yeah. She didn't seem too, too bothered by it either. So like, no. that that kind of made me feel a bit better then too. Yeah. Yeah. I like the whole, like, vampire thing that they had going on in this book. Like, how they're considered vessels. And they yeah. only feed on witch's blood. So interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, like, the magic, too, was done really uh, well. Like, all the scenes with Willow where she's using her magic. And, like, that deep connection she has with nature. Where yeah. she, like, puts her hands down in the, the dirt. And just the way that Harper, like, really wrote those scenes... And, like, oh, and the part about how, like, the connection and the balance which has with her powers. Yeah. That was, I loved that because so many of these paranormal romance, or, well, not just romance, but any paranormal books that have, like, witches in it. Like, it, it almost just seems like their magic is just there. Like, like yeah. there's no, you know, they can do it however much they want, wherever they want. But at least here in this novel, there was a, a connection and a balance. Like, uh, she wrote... 
Our magic is about balance. You cannot take more than you give and still expect nature to answer your call. It's a dance, a relationship like no other. If all we do is take and use, how are we any better than the humans who poison the earth? I asked, running a gentle finger over the vine that had stabilized me. It was this symbiotic relationship that a witch was meant to have with her affinity, harmony rather than theft. Like that, I love that. Yeah, I was just like, mm, mic drop. Yeah, <laughs> literally. I know a lot of people had said that they had seen the ending coming. Like, I've read some reviews that people said, I don't know, was predictable. But I honestly did not see that coming. No, same. Like, I, I love how they referenced it, though. Like, he had the painting of Lucifer. Yeah. In his office. Yeah. <laughs> that should have clued us all in. I know. When they first kidding. mentioned that. <laughs> no, nope, not a clue. Like, when they describe, like, with the the ramp or the stairs being formed, like, from that mirror and coming up from, like, from hell, basically. And they were, descri- like, she was describing, like, these two people, like, the two devils or whatever, uh, carrying, like, that bed. And mm-hmm. then she was like, oh, my gosh. Like, basically, you know, like, who's on this bed? And then it was, <laughs> <laughs> my mouth dropped. Like, yeah. literally. <laughs> freaking lucifer um like when she like before the mirror made that like connection from hell um or like the passageway from hell and how that other i don't remember her name now but the other the person who was there talking to her and she was like yeah like uh your husband's soul Mm -hmm. um talking about her husband's soul being like trapped here on earth and (laughs) oh my god like what i i had no idea where this was going no no i it was so hard for me to not like grab up the second book right away (laughs) literally as soon as i was done that i actually did bring it up on the kindle i was like hey do i do it (laughs) it's so sad that we have like so many other book priorities right now (laughs) i just want to read the second book and see what happens jeez well Uh, we're gonna have to do that this month yeah or try Uh, the the only thing that really stopped me from making it a full five stars was just that like i wanted more out of it yeah it seemed like it was such a short book and it covered such like a vast amount of information and characters, but never really got into the meat of it. Yeah, agreed. Like, like her friends, or you know, like like I don't I don't even remember their names. That's how little it was was brought up. Um, but like the other students at the school, like I just wanted more interaction between Willow and everybody. And like, um, there was no like, did she go to classes? She was at the school, but it didn't feel um. like she was at a school. Yeah, like, that's, oh, like, this could have easily been, like, a 500-page book, and... Oh, easy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, that whole, like, I was expecting kind of like a, like a Hogwarts sort of, sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Really delving into all of that, but, but it wasn't. It was very, uh, fast-paced, get to the point of Willow and, um, Grey. Yeah. And like that is good in some books obviously. Like yeah. we we like it when it you know, when it's not like um yeah. But this easily for? could have had another 200 pages. Yes, and I would not have complained one bit. Oh no. my god. Hopefully now with the second book we'll get more more into it. Yeah, hopefully it feels like two books and yeah. like supposed to be like the one book, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, this, like, was in the, the part of the book where everything seemed so cute and good yep. and, you know, the relationship seemed like it was going good places. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he said to her, you fight. Every moment of every day you fight because that is who you are, he whispered, dropping his forehead to mine. What happens when I'm tired of fighting? I asked, trying to ignore the pool of tears threatening to fall, hoping that water from the shower would wash them away before he could notice. His face softened, his lips touching mine in a kiss that was so much more delicate than any other. Then you let me do it for you. When he said that, I was just like, oh my god. He had us all fooled. (laughs) I think, I, I don't think it was, 
I think book two is going to wrap it all together that he, like, this was true. You know, like, that this is um, really what he was like with her. That this was the, you know, him. Yeah, I hope so. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's what it's going to be. Um, And even from, like, the very start, like, the first interaction of him, like, on her, like, at her door. Oh. And she's, like, trying to, like, close the door and stuff. Uh, the very first thing that I highlighted was when he said, why don't you come outside and lie to me again, love? Ooh! He used like love him. so often, and it was, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, see, that doesn't give me the ick. When when it's baby, like, every two seconds, that's what <laughs> makes me feel icky. <laughs> love was just, oh. Because it's so, like, mature and grown up. Yeah. Yeah. Love. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I I need to start book two. Yeah, I I definitely want to read the next book now. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if we're gonna, <laughs> I don't know if I can do it this month with or <laughs> for November with the uh, the with big the, old with featured the read. great featured read <laughs> like eight hundred uh, and something pages. Damn. Uh but. It's definitely up next on my TBR. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think that's pretty well it for tonight. I think so. What a good month. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a pretty good month for reading. Quality books. Yes. For the most part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. We, we're just never going to speak of, of that again. <laughs> I'm curious now, too, though. <laughs> well, put it on your TBR. All right. I guess that concludes it. Yes. If, uh, again, if anybody has any recommendations or suggestions for books that you'd like us to cover, let us know on our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that we're behind. That's so true. <laughs> oh, well, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Toodles. <laughs>